Welcome to Database Management. My name is Jose Gomez and today we're going to cover Chapter 1, Relational Database Design using Oracle. The material covered in this lesson video comes from the textbook OCA Oracle Database 12C SQL Fundamentals 1 Exam Guide. The sections covered in this book in this chapter include position the server technologies, understand relational structures, summarize the SQL language, use the client tools, create the demonstration schemas. The first section covers Oracle Server Architecture, Oracle Web Logic Server, Oracle Enterprise Manager, Cloud Computing, Development Tools, and Languages. Here we have the Oracle Server Architecture. We have several components between the user and the database. The main two components include the user processes and the server processors. For the server processes, we have two separate ones, one for the application and one for the, for the database. In the Oracle WebLogic server, we have two main components, the application server and the database server. Both of them work together to provide information to the user. In this case, uh, the information is available through a, a website, which is hosted in the application server. The database is hosted in the database server, and again, together, they work to provide information to, to users, in this case, through the website. In the Oracle Enterprise Manager, uh, information about the database is provided to the user. This is important because the user is interested that the, that the database is always available and it, it performs as fast as possible. In cloud computing, all the database components can be in the cloud. That means that they can be in different geographical locations and don't need to be in the local computer center of a company. There are three languages within the database. SQL is the, the language that we're going to cover in this course. PS, SQL, and Java are beyond this course. Uh, SQL manipulates data. Uh, it, it retrieves information. It can change information. It can uh, delete information and it can create new information. PLSQL and Java are programming languages that cre can create applications that can work with the database. In the second section, Understand Relational Structures, we're having real-world scenarios, entities and relations, roles and tables. In this course, we're going to have two real-world scenarios. These are sample databases that we're going to be able to use to practice our SQL. The first one is a human resources scenario, which is provided by Oracle, and it has employee records, departments, office locations, and job-related information for a typical HR department. The order entry scenario is also provided by Oracle and contains information for a fictitious commercial system that tracks products, customers, and the sales orders that have been placed. Now we move on to relations. Databases have different relations. Uh, sometimes they're one-to-one, -one, sometimes they're many-to-many, -many. other times it's one-to-one, -one. and finally we have many-to-many. -many. An example of uh, one-to-many will be one person that has several cars. A many-to-one relation, we could have several persons that own one car. In a one-to-one -one relation, we can have one person that can only have one Texas driver's license. Another example for for a one-to-one -one relation will be a person that only has persons, a person that has one social security number. A many-to-many -many relationship relation example will be a student that can register for many classes in a class that can include many students. In data normalization, we try to reduce or eliminate data redundancy. In data normalization, we, we try to make the database as optimal as possible by re removing 
duplicates or wasted space. The first step of data normalization is called first normal form. This step tries to eliminate repeating groups of data. We have an example here. We have two tables. It, they're the same table, we, one for before and one for after. This table consists of a listing of automobiles that have been sold by a car lot. The, third, the second row has Joe Garcia, which has purchased two cars a Toyota Tacoma and a Nissan Sentra. In order to go through the first step of data normalization, we need to separate this record into two records. And in the after table, we, we've done this. We have Joe Garcia and, and uh, split into two, one for the Tacoma, one for the Sentra. Again, this is what happens in the first step of data normalization. And the, our goal is here, the goal here is to create an optimal database. The second step, which is called second normal form, we remove attributes from the entity that are not dependent on the primary key. Okay, on our before table, still called vehicles table, we have Joe Garcia, which has the same name, same address, same city, same phone, and same preferences. In order to avoid this from happening again, we need to create another table called owner's table and in the original vehicles table we get rid of all that duplication and we put a, a column called owner ID and we reference that column to the, to the owner ID in the owner's table and now we avoid the repetition we don't have any repetition and we have two separate tables that is the outcome of going through the second second step of the of database normalization. In the third normal form, we remove all independent attributes from the second NF entity. Uh, in this example, we have a uh, in the customers in the owners table we have a column called preference and this is this tells uh, the the user of this list whether the owner prefers trucks or they prefer uh, sedans SUV whether they have no preference so in order to uh, to minimize data usage or data storage we break that out into a different table and it's a, this is going to be a small table. It's not going to change. It's called. It's going to be called preference table. And the original owner's table, we 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 avoid using the whole wor word, and we put a preference code. And we're going to link that preference code to the preference code uh, column in the preference table. And number one, it's going to. Number one, it's going to be no preference. Number two is going to be trucks. Number three is going to be sedans. Number four is going to be SUV. Number five, it's going to be other. So instead of spelling all the the whole words here, we can replace them by a code, and that and that code can be linked to the preference table. And this concludes our data normalization. So if you perform these three steps on the data that you that you're using and you plan to design uh, an efficient database you need to go through these step three steps to get an optimal database now we move to the primary key the primary key basically uniquely identifies each record so I have three examples here we have the vehicles table for the vehicles table we have the VIN of the car so if I'm correct there's no two VIN numbers that are exactly the same. So that uniquely identifies an automobile. In the second example, we have owner's table. So if we, if we provide an owner ID to every customer that we have here, uh, we would avoid uh, duplicates. So it uniquely identifies each customer. Finally, finally we have the preference table 
the primary key for the for the preference table will be reference code. Again, that uniquely identifies each record in this table. Here are examples of bad primary keys. Um, in the vehicles table, we have year. If we use a year as a primary key, that would be a very, very bad primary key. Because what if we have two cars with the same year? All right, we would be very confused. Another bad example would be owner's names. What if we have two people with the same owner? O owner name, I'm sorry. Next, we have referential integrity in foreign keys. We have two examples. The first example has two tables, vehicle table and owner's table. Both of them are linked to the owner ID. This linkage is called a foreign key. The referential integrity part means that this, this linkage needs to be correct. We cannot have an owner ID in the, in the vehicle's table that doesn't exist in the owner's table. We cannot have a vehicle that we sold that, that we don't have the, the, the owner's information. And also that the owner ID in the, in the owner's table is not repeated. The second example, we have two tables. We have the owner's table and we have the preference table. Again, the linkage is called a foreign key. And the referential integrity makes sure that we have a that we don't have a preference num refer preference code that doesn't exist in the preference table. Now we move on to rows and tables. In this example, we have vehicles table. The whole, all the rows and columns in this, in this image is, is called a table. Uh, each row is called a record. Each column is called a field. So th those are the basic components of a, of a database table. Rows, columns. Rows and columns make up a table. Now we move on to the next section in this chapter. We have summarized the SQL language. We have SQL standards and SQL commands. We have two standards that govern SQL. It's, it's not like anybody can make changes to SQL to the rules. We have two governing standards that, uh, that uh, oversee those changes and decides whether to implement them or not. Here we have the SQL commands. We have SQL commands that are grouped into different sections. We have the data manipulation language commands. We have the data definition language commands. We have the data control language commands. And we have the transition control language commands. Now we move on to the next section, which is called Use the Client Tools. These are the tools provided by Oracle. They are free of a charge, and they're used to communicate with a database. They're used to make changes, to make, uh, to add records, to delete records, to, to manage uh, database objects. So these are very powerful tools, and these tools, they're essential for this course. There are two tools. There's the SQL Developer and then there's SQL Plus. We are going to use SQL Developer in this course. We will not use SQL Plus. You will see a lot more of these tools in the following chapters. Next week I will give you instructions on how to download and install SQL Developer. I'll create your schema and give you your credentials so you can make a connection to the database which is located in the STC computer room server. Now we will move on to create the demonstration schemas. We have users and schemas, the HR and OE schemas, demonstration schema creation.
Users and schemas. We a, a database user is a person who can log into the database. A database schema is a is all the objects, tables, constraints, views, etc. in the database owned, owned by the users. The two terms can often be used interchangeably as there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the users and schemas. So when I create when I create your schema next week and provide you, you will be the user but you'll be tied to that schema that I, I'll create for you. Now we move on to the HR and OE schemas. These are the sample databases that I that I talked about earlier. We have the HR and the OE uh, samples. Finally, we have demonstration schema creation. I will use a create user command to create your schema. Again, I will provide a test schema for you next week. I will also provide instructions on how to connect to your schema using SQL Developer. I will also provide instructions on how to install SQL Developer in your computer. This concludes my presentation for Chapter 1. Thank you for watching.